day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, this is the second record, the second Sunday, where we actually start using the uh, Zoom video. Uh, it, it, I think you'll like it, uh, because now you get to see each of the speakers, uh, or you get to see all of us as a group talking uh, as we fellowship. We also bring the scriptures up when it's time to bring the scriptures up. You know, I tell you, you know, when I do the editing, that's one of the hard things to do is bring the scriptures up, catch them with the person speaking, and then bring it back down. Here with this, this Zoom, the recording, it, it shows you when the scriptures comes up, at least the ones that we use for the study, uh, so everybody can see. But the main thing is I hope you're still safe. I want you to really, really focus on, on uh, keeping that, that distance as much as you can. And uh, they're starting to do testing in different areas now, so you just get tested. Some of you don't want to hear about being the results, but let's go ahead and go get tested so we can know whether we uh, are affecting anybody else. But it also gets our co-workers and family members at the same time to, to, to know where they are and whether they're uh, contagious or not. But I do want to keep us keep in prayer. Uh, pray for the victory. Pray that we defeat this giant. Uh, concerning, concerning this virus is contagious. But you know what? Life is contagious in Jesus Christ. So <laughs> I want us to continue to, to stay in prayer and pray for one another and believe in God. This is the 10th of May. Uh, this is part A that I'm doing now. And I want to make sure you understand that God knows you by name. Amen. He knows you by name. And, 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 and I want you to get to the point to know him. That's what Philippians uh, 3 verse 10 says, that I may know him. And to know him is for him to know you. And he wants to have a personal relationship with you. So stay focused, trust in God, and watch what he does in our life. Have confidence, fear not what can kill the body, but fear that which can kill and put you in hell as well as your soul. But look at, more importantly, have confidence in the fact that he has given you eternal life. Therefore, nothing can affect you in your spirit. Your life is sealed in Jesus Christ. And your confidence is in God's words, God's will. Hear from him. Go ahead and take on your challenges in life hearing from him. He is the one we want to put our trust in. Trust in the Lord, all your heart, and all your soul, and all your mind. Lead not to your own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. God bless you, and I want you to continue to focus on God's word, and I'll do the same. I want to continue to pray, lift each other in prayer, lift up the name of Jesus, and Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you, and I'll see you again, all right? Bye-bye. Father God, thank you for having a lot of us together together in this place today. Thank you, Father, that even though we're separated by time and space, that we are united by your spirit. That you are able to bring us together in one accord by your spirit, that regardless of how far we're separated, we're still united in you. And we pray, Father, during this period of time that you talk to the hearts of each and every last one of us and bind us together on one accord that we might accomplish your will in the earth. That some seeing you in us might receive you and receive eternal life even as we have received it. Now we open our hearts and our minds up to you, Lord, and we ask you, fill us with your spirit, lead and guide us, direct us, and reveal your truth to us in this hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. 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 Hey, Brother Bob, what, you know, like I said, happy Mother's Day to your wives and to your uh, mothers. Uh, I wanted to, hey, Jimmy, just say I, I wanted to, to, to cover, I sent out the slides, Chris. Did you get the slides, Chris? Yeah, I finally, I looked at them a little bit right before I got on, got online. You did send them out. I gave you that one. You did do that. 
And look, while while we was talking, I did add some more slides to it because we always won't get to finish them. Uh, but uh, we also talked about Thursday was the uh, midweek uh, recommendation for uh, Elder Johnson for the Bible. Thursday, Thursday okay. seven. That All way we right. pick up okay. we don't cover. Uh, but but Jimmy, I was thinking, you know, the something we started off with, uh, and I'm gonna share these for you these slides real quick, and then I get back come off of them. Was the uh, the the whole purpose we started off this year was talking about knowing him, right? Yes. And 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 and, <clears throat> and one of the pieces about knowing him is the importance to understand that he knows you, right? To know somebody is to also be known by somebody, correct? In other words, God wants to know you as much as we need to know him. Uh, so I, I did start with my, my revelation one was Philippians 3.10 that said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformal unto his death. But Revelation 2.7, chapter 7, Damn. Uh, we talked about Brother Addison when I'm referring to about that white stone and it say, he that has an ear let him hear what the spirit says unto the churches to him the overcomers will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone and in the stone a new name written which no man knoweth save as he that receives it once again this is that personal uh connection that intimate connection between you and god is that he has a name written for you that nobody else knows and on top of that i was sitting there thinking about the fact that most of the if you ever notice when you go through the bible jimmy sometimes they'll say uh a certain man but sometimes they'll say a certain name they were talking about for example lazarus and the rich man that was a good example of the fact is that that was not a parable. That was God, Jesus talking about there's a certain rich, there was a certain rich man. He didn't give his name. And that person name, that person when he died was taken to hell for torment because there was no personal relationship where Lazarus, and I ain't talking about Lazarus raised from the dead, but I'm talking about Lazarus in this, in this story he gave. He ended up in the bosom of Abraham. And one of the things I wanted, so they said throughout the Bible, you'll see that names are written. And I wanted to give an example here. <laughs> I took, I just said the slide, just changed the slide, Exodus 33, 17. And it says, and the Lord said unto Moses, I will do the thing also that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name and then john 10 3 to him the porters open and the sheep hear his voice and he causes his own sheep by name and leads them out can i say something about that that scripture there yes sir the beautiful thing about that is when the shepherd gets the sheep, the sheep are in a protected area. Uh -huh. But he leads them out of that protected area, right. which caught my eye. Yes, sir. But he leads them to, to green out, pastures, though. Yes, to go out to green pastures. But we also know that that, that being led out into the world, so uh -huh. to say, uh -huh. there's, uh, there's trials and tribulations for those sheep. Right. You know, there there there's uh enemies out there. Right. You know, predators. Right. But you, uh, it just it's just something that just caught my eye uh when I was reading this. You know, you know, one of the things I wanted to uh cover later on and like later on in the study is the fact is that I think you you have to, I think our life is is requires uh this conflict or these challenges to make us grow. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, yeah. An example I can use, like the, the, the one they're talking about with the, the, the uh, I guess the, 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 how butterfly 
comes to existence, mm -hmm. the cocoon, and 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 only the stress of breaking out of that cocoon allows that particular butterfly species to become one. <clears throat> and, and and I think I think life is like that too. I and somebody said I think Jimmy said it last week or Brother Addison uh, or Chris. Well, the fact is that Mike Tyson was a was a terror until Mike Tyson got hit. He was he was not he was you, he seemed invincible, and maybe he even felt invincible because he was knocking people out in the first first two or three rounds, right? Mm -hmm. But if he never lost the fight. He, you know, he didn't really, Jim, you know, I don't think he really was ready for the, the, the fact that you can't lose. They even do that with football, right? Some teams, you don't want to go all the way through the thing undefeated because it may impact your psyche when you're in a game where you may be behind. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so, Absolutely. So, brother, that's what I think. I think, I think he, he we we have to go out in life, and the shepherd takes you out there. Mm -hmm. Well, I brought that up because we we talked about that last year, where the uh, spirit took Jesus into yeah. the wilderness Come for on, forty bro. days. Come on! And I thought how that 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 caught my eye because of that, you know. Yeah, I think so, and I, I, I just think that. He even said thing when he took them to the wilderness, it was like to prove them. Yes. Right? Yeah. You know, so I, I think part of life is you have to, I, I think, for example, if you, Jimmy, I think you may have brought one time, if, if I'm raised in a sterile environment and then all of a sudden put into a environment such as the real world, my immunity system is not strong enough to deal with this environment. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. I often say the people who are going to be looked at to survive these last days are these folks who are homeless and out here living in the streets because they know, they are survivors. They don't go to the doctors. They don't get no 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 shots, no nothing. They they don't wash all the time, right? You know, and but yet they're they're some of the strongest people, and, and they're they're durable. Yeah. You know, likewise with a dog. You yeah. got these. I I mean, I've had I've had dogs pretty much all my life. Right. Ain't had to give them no shots. Ain't had to feed them. You know, special food, fish bones, chocolate, all that stuff that a killer pedigree. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know that dog guy. Right. So I'm just saying, <laughs> your your point is valid that you you isolate something and you 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 purify it. It can't handle being led out into the wilderness. Exactly. Bro, you need it. You need to be careful about what you're saying about these dogs. That sounds like some animal abuse you just been through doing. <laughs> so you can't put that kind of information out there to the public. Look, look, you're they going can to say jail, whatever son. they want. The dog didn't die. <laughs> yeah, but hey, now a lot of stuff that he just said or we saying right now, think about that. It gets into that issue of whether I should wear a mask or not. Because and, and doctors have spoken on that. Exactly. Because like you say, if I'm not building up my immunity system when I'm walking outside, like you say, I only put my mask on when I'm walking into a store to deal with other folks that I do not know. When I come back out, I take my mask off because I do need to build up these immunities that's floating around with the air. I don't need you blowing on me directly, but I don't need to walk around with a mask on 24 hours a day because like you said, I'm making my system, I'm cleaning my system up. Well, not cleaning it up. I'm naturally prohibiting myself from building up my own immunities while I'm wearing that mask. That's what right. I'm trying to say. Yeah. And I think a lot of people have already been through, you know, they started talking about some symptoms of this disease, that some people have already been through it. And, and now you're starting to see some other symptoms 
They indicate that you've been through it. Yes, sir. You're talking because, about like I told y'all. I told you. I think I went through it in um in January. I, I think I'm seriously. I think I went through this in January. I think I think I did too because you know I went to uh, Virginia uh, to to Chantilly and we had all those foreigners there. It went. To, it was called Storm Force, and the the UK people were there. Australians and New Zealand and all those other people there, as well as everybody across the country. And the, 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 the uh, Australians, no, excuse me, the United Kingdom people, it was like 15 of them that were very sick and had to leave the, the conference. Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm correct or wrong, UK was a, uh, uh, one of the, it's still Hot spots. Hot spots. Yes, sir. And I do remember not feeling too well for a few days after I came back. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then you're starting to see some of these little symptoms that they're talking about. Like, you ever had where you severe rash around your foot? You have somebody that's COVID toes now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw that about them kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think some of us have been exposed to it. Oh, yeah. Well, well I wouldn't suggest anybody. I wouldn't suggest that anybody follow my lead during this scamdemic because uh, I ain't put on a mask at first for nothing. Okay, but but you know the mask is to protect other people. Have not you, been, you been in any large crowds? Huh? Have you been in any, any large crowds? I've been everywhere I was going before before they even mentioned scamdemic. I've been everywhere I went. Every, the only time I put on the mask the other day, I had to go now on the base to get my ID card. Uh, renewed. Only me not put one on in because they wouldn't let me in there without one on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it's designed to protect other people, not you. So that, just keep that in mind, too. So <laughs> it, it's not for protection. But but back to the fact is, though, with, with Brother Eisen, that's the point I'm saying. I think he has to lead you. Oh, yeah. And and, and I wasn't saying that it was a bad thing. No, what no, I'm saying I mean, was he does you take know, that was the Holy Spirit that led him out. And, and again, Jesus Christ, the yeah. third day Trinity, you know, leads his sheep out. Exactly. And, that, so, and you know, the good example of Exodus, he took them out. Yes. But you know what? And then there's that fear of the unknown and that comfort of that shepherd ringing that bell constantly. And they can, they, so they know they're in the comfort of the shepherd yes. or at yes. least in his presence. Exactly. At all times, and that gives them comfort because I'm yes. gonna tell you something. They, the doctors have also been talking about at the same time because of fear, because of the unknown, because of all the negative information that we're receiving, and all this apprehension also yes. weakens the immune system and kind of helps you put yourself in a position where you're more vulnerable to catch something just mm -hmm. because of the the propaganda that's being put out there. So yes. I mean, the, yes. the immune system. It's also a fickle system in that it can be affected by for by a lot of different avenues. Yeah. Even the mindset or yeah. fear yeah. can cause uh, it. Yeah. And uh and even wearing those masks kind of represses it as well, too. So I mean all of it's yeah. all of it is related in some kind of way, seemingly, you know. Yes, sir. A stress has a stress has a profound impact on your immune system. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, th I think th I think that's just part of our life that we have to go through it. Hey, look, and maybe this bigger picture, Jimmy, as far as the church. Hey, this, this is when we're talking about the church to to step out, to 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 call itself to move beyond the four walls. Amen. This is one of those examples of y'all supposed to go out. <laughs> y'all supposed to be doing the work of the ministry. You come back to huddle, but you're supposed to go out. Yeah, this, but see, that's that's the thing. This is, like I told you, that paradigm shift that is going to cause everybody to go out. Because, like you said, the huddle was or the huddle is these big mega churches. Uh -huh. Stay amongst yourselves. Believe what you believe. Oh, you can give me a dollar if you want to, but I'm still going to stay closed in here. Give me a dollar if you want to. I'm in it. But um, like you say, those churches got are so big, and like you said, they segregated themselves away from everybody. Right. And if you don't belong to that group, they really don't want you in there, or you pay the price, you can come join our group. And then right. I'm gonna have your I'm gonna have our own sports program, I'm gonna have our own dating system, 
I'm going to have our own money thing. I'm going to be all the money changers going to stay right here. And we're going to keep all of this amongst ourselves. And we all supposed to be Christians and love each other. But we got our group right here. We good together. Don't fellowship or listen to this guy. Follow me. I'm going to get you there. That's what these big churches were doing. And now all of a sudden they're finding out or they're going to have to go online. And I want to see how all these churches are going to come back together and how are people going to see what's really going on. Like you said, you really don't need this big church. Well, I want to see how it's going to affect everything. But another thing, too, I think about the fact is that the, 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 the church is supposed to be more just feeding the word, but have the ability to, to also take care of one another in a time of need. In other words, they should be the first to be able to say mega, at least mega. Could be smaller ones, too, but let's go mega. Nope. It's, it's it full lines and everything. And look, everybody that don't have, you lost your job, you, you, can't, you, know, you can't get any food. Hey, come, mm -hmm. come to the come to the ministry, and we're gonna have a food bank for you. Uh, yeah. You can't pay your rent. Hey, you know all those ties you've been given, all that. I mean, it, it's it's great that we built this edifice. Great, great, because mm -hmm. we can put more people in it. But yeah. are you available? Or have you what do you call yourself? Condition yourself as a ministry to respond to the needs of the people. And most of them have them because, like you say, to me, or what I see around here, the little small churches out there trying to hand out bags of food. Yes, yeah, I saw it. If, if you ride down Watson, the little, the itty bitty churches are the ones out there trying to give food, especially the little small black churches out trying to hand out food. And you're looking at them folks, you know, you know where they are, where they come from, going, I don't know how they got that food together. And I bless them for giving it to the folks, but a lot of folks right there, they're the ones that really need that food. Yeah. Well, you know, too, I would, I would say to that that, you know, light, light, in my opinion, is only effective in a place where it's dark. Yeah. I mean, if the sun is shining bright and all the lights on, you go out there and shine, shine, shine a flashlight, it's not going to really make a hell of a beings a difference in nothing that's going on. But if it's dark and salt also, it's a preserver. It doesn't preserve itself. I mean, salt doesn't keep salt salty or preserved. Salt around mixed with other things preserves those other things. Yeah. And the light obviously has to be out there where it's darkness for right. it to be effective. And that's the main thing we miss about being the salt and light of the earth. Yeah, yeah. You know, so that, that's what I, I was like wondering that. about that. That is exposing, like I said, Chris, the paradigm. Because maybe some, some of them didn't even think that that had to happen. I mean, even though y'all, so I know y'all like world change, we did have a need ministry. They did pay for some time people, a few people who needed rent money. But they're not prepared mm -hmm. for this. They weren't prepared for this right here. But nobody was. No, yeah. Nobody was. Right. Yeah. But you definitely want to sit there and say, okay, because, you know, back in the early days, churches, remember they were feeding the uh, widows. That's why they mm -hmm. came up with deacons. Mm -hmm. uh, who was that that they fed uh, God sent out to the wilderness? Was it, uh, uh, was it Elijah? Uh, who, who, you know, where the ravens came and brought meat? Yeah, it was Elijah. He was... When he was taking care of the, the, him when he put him out there in that wilderness. And matter of fact, when he went to see that widow, then yeah. with the boy. They gave her gave her last meal. Come on now. And then he made sure that woman, woman was taken care of. Uh, all she had to do was be obedient to God. And next well, day, you know, go ahead. It's true that a lot of inventions come out of necessity. Yeah. And, it's, and, 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 and we have to see all these situations as an opportunity to develop a different skill or a different avenue or a different way of doing things. And so the mind is a, it's just an amazing thing, man. And sometimes we just have to be conditioned to not cry over what we don't have, but be excited about the fact that now we get an opportunity to try to explore other avenues that we never would have even explored had we not been put in the situation. Sometimes we have to be forced into something bad yeah. in order to discover things that's been there all the time. Exactly, yes, exactly. I, I think that, that we had, I mean, we're mindful of, the, of what Jesus is doing. Why did this come upon us? What's the outcome concerning the development of the church and the expansion of the kingdom? Right. Uh, Jesus took them from a place of, of, of uh, I mean, the shepherd took them out of a place of safety and took them to where they were hazard, but that was the place they were going to produce. 
yeah. they had to be fed in order to actually produce something. They had to be so the work couldn't be done inside of the the sheepfold. It had to be done outside of the sheepfold. Right. The suffering that he goes through is indicative of the suffering that we experience a lot of things so we can identify with what he went through. Exactly. We appreciate his sacrifice a lot more. We look at his pattern and then we exercise that pattern in order to accomplish the same thing that he did. Uh, and that's to gain other other people to the kingdom. Right. So like you said, it's just inherent to our 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 supposed uh what can we say practice. But the practice that we formed was one of we gather together in safety and refuse to go out and preach, just like they did in Jerusalem initially. Yeah. Then the persecution came in when the word spread. Come on now. Now COVID come has come and we can't get in each other's face. Come so on. We're going to be develop a habit of getting in other people's face aside from each other. Come you know, on. Just forming this club that we had gathered together. Yes, sir. Together. Yes, sir. So God is moving the program along. The one thing that he has done on a personal note is they give me a lot more time to look at myself. Amen. There's something that's strange that is happening, and I think you kind of touched on it earlier. The, the word says, These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out those that speak with new tongues, that take a service, you know, so forth and so on. These right. works greater shall you do. So, what's the activity of the church right now in the in the in the in light of COVID? Well, we're sheltering in place, and I go like, okay, why am I sheltering in place? I'm supposed to be out doing this. Normally, I would be trying to do that. I can literally say, and I say again, as did that week, I was told to go inside. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And when I went inside, I began to realize that I wasn't ready to go outside. <laughs> you know? It was in that place that I realized that if I had gone out there, I might have ended up dead for real because spiritually, I was out of place. <laughs> I wasn't able to lay hands on myself <laughs> and right. get him. I mean, God kept showing me little stuff like, hey, you out of, you know, you walking in the wrong light right now. You're going cardinal on me. <laughs> and I had slipped so far out of God's will as far as, you know, sowing to the flesh or sowing to the spirit that not only was I not able to do the works, what I was doing was literally killing me. But I would not have noticed that until I got a chance to sit back with nobody around me but me and Jesus and find out where my flaws were. Right. So. I think we talked about revival last uh, last week, that this, this could come out of this, but there's a preparation that has to take place for revival. Come on you now. Have to be ready. Come we on. Have to be in the face of God. <coughs> it's not our revival, it's his revival. And for, of course, for us to do our work, we have to go to him to find out what the task is. So that scripture, 714, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 714, is legitimate, and it's being what can I say, worked in us right now. If my people were to call by my name would humble themselves and pray. Yes, sir. And seek my face, then will I hear and turn from their wicked ways. We're doing a lot of stuff that's wicked. The yeah. church is yeah. formed in the, in, the, in the fashion that it's formed in, but it's not meeting the need of the Christ. We got big buildings, we got great programs, we got all this stuff happening, but nobody gets saved behind it. Hmm. That ain't God, that ain't Christ. And I think what's happening now is that we'll be reconfigured in order to accomplish his will a little bit more fervently, a, more, a little bit more effectively. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just like Martha and Mary in this particular instance, we get an opportunity to sit back and ask ourselves, how much of this that we've been doing is necessary? Mm -hmm. And well, how much of it is just fluff or not, not needed? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. during this opportunity, we got a chance to really look at all the different activities and practices, the ancillaries, the auxiliaries, all these different things, and how much of that was really doing the work and how much that was really necessary or have I sat there and, and done that which is needful? And he said that thing would not be taken away from her. So, I mean, we get a chance at least to, to analyze kind of what our lives and look at where we are and where we need to be and what have we been doing and what, what I've been doing. Amen. Is that really taking me where I really want to go or not, I, you know? I, I think one thing that really kind of perplex, not perplexes, but kind of interests me is to know how many people yes. all the time we've had have really sat down and read the scriptures. You know, literally, as much time as we've had in, in shelter in place, a lot of people had time to go through the Bible from yeah. the yeah. beginning to the end. Yeah. And we got so many resources that we can do that through. Now, we don't even have to read it. We can just turn exactly. it on and listen to it while we exactly. the store or whatever. But what are we doing with this downtime? And what I found out was I, I was killing a lot of downtime it wasn't down. It was occupied by other vain pursuits. Woo. So I was busy. Then I do the same. I go doing little study and stuff like that. And I realized that I didn't increase my time 
in, in, in prayer or in meditation when I had the, the time to do it. I still allowed it the same amount of time for that. And then I found another frivolous deed to do at home, like sitting in front of the TV or <laughs> contemplating some garbage. You know what I'm saying? I got everything else. But we had plenty of time to get before the Lord. We were getting paid to stay before the Lord. A lot of us were. But yeah. are, we, are we doing that? And that's, I think <laughs> at the church, are we getting ready for the game? Are we just sitting in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, locker room, just sitting on the bench and rocking back and forth? We should be in the weight room getting prepped to go out and do this thing because the next go around might be a lot more serious than what we're looking at right now. There may be previews of coming attractions. Yeah. So